uh, I was asking if there's children sermon. There's no children sermon. All right, so maybe this time we'll leave it for our main speaker, um, assistant. Gentlemen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Amen. I can't see the smiles. I know you have masks, but I'm hoping I can see your eyes just closed. Then I know you're smiling. Okay, to start off, shall we close our eyes in prayer? Our dear Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for this beautiful Sabbath that you've blessed us with. Lord, we want to thank you for the gift of life and allowing us just to be here to worship you. Lord, as we are going through the divine service, Lord, may you use me. May I be filled by the Spirit in everything that I'm going to say. May it not be my words, but words that come from above. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to share a story with you before I get into my sermon. So I think it was last night or this morning. I was going through my WhatsApp status and um, my daughter was near me and she says to me, there was a in the background, and she said, is what you're listening to have anything to do with church? Does it have anything to do with church? And I, I'm like, no, it was just it was just a status. And she said to me, but you're not supposed to be looking at that if it has nothing to do with church. So today our message is going to have something to do with that. It's coming from Daniel 3, and we are going to be talking about the Hebrew voice. I'm sure you guys now know that I like the story about the Hebrew voice because this is what we were doing last week. So when we look at the story of the Hebrew voice, I'll just give a summary of where I want us to start from. Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 2 had been told that God had given him a certain time to rule the kingdom of Babylon. What did he say his kingdom was? On the image, he says his part was what? It should be a carved hunter, like it was gold. So what does he decide to do? He says, you know, God is telling me I'm going to rule for a limited amount of time. And the rest of the what? The image was different. What was here? What's this part? Silver. What is this part called? Yes. And what else? We're revising. Every teacher asks their students to revise, right? And the legs? Iron. Yes. So Nebuchadnezzar thought, you know what? God might have showed me this, but I am better than him. What is that called? Pride. So what did he decide to do? He made an image out of gold. And he said, everyone is going to worship this image. Okay, let's turn our Bibles to Daniel 3 and... Can someone read from verse 1? Nebuchadnezzar is making himself a god. 
And when you read about Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar was so intelligent that Babylon was a place where people used to come to get educated. So this is a learned man. And he's being told by a God he does not know. And he thinks, you know what, all this time, I've been a learned person. I can surely come up with something that proves that I'm better than God. Nebuchadnezzar is not different from any of us. Sometimes God will show us, your season ends here. Yes, you might be leading in your workplace, but it ends here. And what do we do? God, no, I am going to continue. You know, sometimes even when we are praying and we say to God, God, I want this. There's a difference between a permissive will and God's will, a perfect will. Permissive will is what we want. And God's will, the perfect will, is what God wants. And every time you pray, even if you look at the Lord's Prayer, it ends by saying what? Let your will be done, right? Mm -hmm. But in our daily life, sometimes God elevates us in different places, and we forget that he is God. He sends us on assignment as soldiers in the army to say, I want you, I want to put you here, but for you to prosper, for you to still be my child, you need to remain humble. Nebuchadnezzar was very privileged, forgot to even tell him the time he was going to rule. You know, not many people get that. You know, most of the times we say God just gives us life for the step we are on. But Nebuchadnezzar got the whole staircase, right? But even after getting the whole staircase, he says, no, this is not enough. I am going to make myself a God. So he got people around him to worship him. Could that be us? There are times we see that everyone is celebrating someone else. Oh, my time is up. He so went through that. Remember when he was now fighting with David and people started celebrating and saying, Saul has killed 10,000, David has killed more. And that's why he started telling him, no, this little boy is taking my place. You know? And that pride kept growing in him to a point where he said, I need to eliminate David. Sometimes we are in family, sometimes we are in spaces where God says, I have set you here as my child to help people. But in the process of helping people, when we see people are not recognizing us, that self in us starts saying, no, I need to remind them who I am. So we start looking for ways for people to worship us. A cousin, an uncle or someone asks for money and you say, before I give them, I want them to go for five days while they beg me, right? And we say, I want to show them that I'm not going to join this meeting so that they suffer. We can easily be like Nebuchadnezzar. And in the end, people will start worshipping us. Without this person, our ah, meeting cannot go on. And we start feeling good, right? To say, ah, they know I need to be here. There's a friend of mine who says, the problem with money is even if a person says something that's not sensible, everyone will clap because of the money that you have. But God is God. Let us read further, verse 8.
astrologers. If you look in Daniel 2, who had said the astrologers? Daniel. Daniel did not say to the king, save me and the three Hebrew boys, and you can kill the rest. He saved everyone else. And now they have an opportunity to go, do good for Daniel and his friends. But what do they use this chance for? To show the king that, you know what, there are people who are doing wrong. You know, and I love the three Hebrew boys because no matter what situation they were going through, they never went before God and they said, God, we are tired. First, we came into this kingdom. We are captured. We've tried to prove that we are better. But one thing after the other keeps coming. Have you seen in our Christian journey, there are times we go through so much. There are times that it feels like you're being attacked left, right, and center. And I want to remind you, the devil does not attack someone who is not a threat. If you see the devil attacking you, then you should know there is something great about you. There's a preacher I was listening to the other day, and he was saying, as a Christian, we all have a uniform. That just says we are God's children. And the devil has his own uniform. As long as you are not wearing his uniform, he's going to be attacking you. But as a wise person, you need to know that this is not something. This is something the devil is trying to bring so that I stop worshiping God. And remember, in every situation, he wants to get us to a point where we say we are self-sufficient and we do not need him. Right? And look at what Nebuchadnezzar is saying. Let us see the God who's going to be able to rescue you from my hand. Chapter 2, what had he done? He had gone down and he said, surely your God lives. Had he not seen that God do the impossible? Had he not seen it? But still, we find in him, we find him forgetting. But he's no different from us even as Christians. Sometimes we forget what God has done for us in the past. There's a song that I like that says, Lord, remind me, remind me, dear Lord, nothing good have I done to deserve God's own son. Sometimes we forget the things that God has done for us. And when we read on, his emotions caused him to say, you know what, throw them into the furnace. Can we read um, Pro Proverbs 15 verse 8? Yeah. A hot tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is low to anger, quite con con quite content contentious, right? A hot tempered man. Have you ever been angry? Have you noticed the things you do when you let your emotions control you? You do the worst because your emotions are the ones that are leading in your life, right? And this is exactly what Nebuchadnezzar did. He felt threatened, so he said, guess what, what does he say? Make it seven times what? To the point where, while they were throwing that, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the people who were throwing them got burnt, right? Sometimes there are people who conspire and say, we want to see this person suffer. And in the process, because of our emotions, we get innocent people hurt, okay? We need to be careful that we don't make our emotions rule us because they will affect us and they will cause us to hurt other people. These soldiers were burnt and to Nebuchadnezzar still, he did not see the hand of God to say, how are these people going in? And they were bound, but when they, were got, when they got in, he sees them standing and there's a fourth man that is in there. Can we read on? Let's read in, can someone read? Verse 13, sorry, sorry, verse 22.
morning he was reciting Isaiah 43 verse 2. Verse 2. What does it say? My guru, can you recite Isaiah 43 verse 2 for us? It says, um, um, oh, sorry, can I? Yes, <laughs> no, you can read it. No, um, it says I'll be with you, um, when you walk through the fire, the, the waters, I'll be with you. When you walk through the rivers, they will not sweep you. When you walk through the fire, the flames won't burn you. Amen. And this is exactly <laughs> what happened to the three Hebrew boys. And that is the promise. When you walk through the waters, they will not sweep you. They will not sweep you. Mm. When you walk through the rivers, mm -hmm. when you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. The three Hebrew boys are an example of the promise of God. Mm. Brother Jacob was sharing this week. I was really touched with the story about Fan Crosby. To say she was memorizing scriptures, 17 chapters every week. You know, and the reason we need to know the promises of God is this. When you are faced with a hard situation, you know which promise to claim. You know, the past few weeks, I will share a story with you that happened to us. I went, um, I, I had worked so hard in September with the camp with everything, and I said to myself, I'm taking a break. I need to take a break. And in that month, it's, it's the month of October, at the beginning of the month, I was praying with the kids and God just kept saying to me, you need to read the power of a praying parent. The power of a praying parent. And I think to myself, why does God keep saying I need to read the power of a praying parent? Then I started reading it. And while I was reading it, I was spending more time with the kids. And I noticed that when I was calling Aiden, he was not responding. You know, and I was saying, what is going on? Then I tried it again when I was sending him for certain things, he was not responding. You know, and then I decided, let me take him to the doctor. I went to the doctor. The doctor said to me, he tried to do a vision test and he couldn't see properly. He tried to do a few, he started asking him a few questions and he's like, I can see what you're talking about. He seems to be delaying in responding, you know. And then he says to me, I'm going to send you to another doctor. So he wrote the letter. And He's like, you need to see this doctor, and he's going to do more tests, and then we'll be able to tell what to do next. Me being nosy, I opened the letter, and what do I see in the letter? They are saying, can you check, we think he's got autism, can you check, we think he can't hear properly, and a whole lot of other things. You know, because I am human, that moment I was like, what? Uh, is this what they are saying? So I'm sure you've known our journey to say he's always had speech delay and he's improving and you say, God, okay, he's finally getting better, better. I do a prayer ministry where I pray for people and I got to a moment where I was like, God, I've been praying for everyone. I've been doing what you've been telling me to do. The one thing I have asked you to do is to make my son better. And I hear that he is getting worse, right? I go to the doctor, the doctor sees him and he's like, ah, your son can't see properly. Definitely one thing is he doesn't have autism. And the other doctor started giving me a whole lot of other things. And then I was talking to one of the ladies that I pray with and she said to me, I mean, you need to realize something. If God has seen fit that you should have a child with all these difficulties, he knew that you could be the best parent for him, you know. And why am I sharing this? It's because this is the reality of the life that we're living. It's so easy to recite these verses until you're the one who's going through it. So the doctor gave us a letter to go for a hearing test and they're like, take him to a professional who's going to check his hearing and everything. But God is good because in that time, other groups started praying for him. We went to the hearing test and my husband came back and he's like, the doctor said, why did we even bring him? His hearing is fine. We started asking him questions and he started responding. And what is amazing is in the week that I was listening to him pray, because I told him he was confused, obviously, what is going on. In his prayers, he started saying, God, please send the Holy Spirit so that I am able to be the person that I need to be. You know, and I was amazed to say, yes, he can't speak. But he's definitely doing certain things. Yes, my life is not perfect, but still God 
wants me to be able to minister. That's the same thing with all of us. Like the Hebrew boys, we all go through situations where we are asked, you have a choice to bow down to what is in front of you or to trust your God. Yes, you've got speech delay, but the other things, everything else the doctor has said has been ruled out. And for me, I saw the hand of God. And the verse that I kept saying to myself in that time was, God is within her. She will not fall, you know. And I promise you that the day I said to myself, God, can people give me a break? I'm not praying for anyone today. And God kept saying to me, you know, you need to pray, you need to pray. And I switched off my phone. When I switched it on, I found a message where someone had sent a message to say, Anna, can you call me? And when I tried to call her, she wasn't answering, you know, and I just said, ah, whatever, I don't know what she's going through. The next thing, I saw a message that was saying, I'm sorry, Anna. This woman had been suicidal for so long, and she had taken pills, you know. And I tried to call her, and I was praying, God, can you save this woman's life? And it also helps me to see that the devil brings trials in our lives to stop us to do what God has called us to do. Thankfully, the family got to her, and she didn't die. She had taken something, but she survived. And I said to myself, forgive me, Lord, for being so consumed with what was happening in my own life. I forgot that I also needed to serve. What am I saying to you? These Hebrew boys are a true example of what we need to do. There are times that our faith is questioned. There are times that we are not, we, everything around us does not make sense. But God wants us to be the light. God doesn't want us to bow down to things that we do not know. God doesn't want us to take the easy way out. God wants us to stand firm. Can we just uh, read the last few verses as we are closing? Verse 28 to verse 30. Little money left for our groceries, and I said to 
God, God, we're not going over budget, you know. We go to the shops, we find the things we want on sale, you know. And you get to see that God is always coming through for us, you know. And I want to encourage you, we're living in a world where everything has become, it's always about you. It's always about doing things a certain way. But like Daniel Shadrick and Mishid, God is still looking for people who stand up for him. God is still looking for people who say, even if the rest go this way, I am going to go this way. And the sad thing is sometimes you find yourself being the only one on that path. And you then look back and you say, oh, I thought my brothers and sisters were with me, you know? But you find you are the only one. But God says, even if you are the only one, I want you to stand for me. There's a verse that says, you can't serve two masters. You have to pick Either you serve God or you serve mammon, right? The choice is ours. We pick who we want to serve. And when we serve God, don't serve him for the blessing that he's going to give you. Serve him for who he is. Because sometimes we then get so consumed to say, God, but I gave you this, where's my blessing? Like I did with Aiden. To say, God, I have a prayer ministry. I'm up every morning. The one thing I ask you to do is protect my children. But God says, humble yourself in every situation, and I will lift you up. Aiden is better, but it took two weeks of me being reminded by God that now you've got pride in your heart. Be humble. I'm still God. If you are still going through this, I have already provided a way out for you so that you can endure it. I will end by saying, my brothers and sisters, may God help us. We are the three Hebrew boys. We're living in a world where everything around us is telling us we need to do things a certain way. Don't look at the people who are around you. God is not going to judge us based on our families. He's going to judge us individually. And remember, someone is always looking at you. And through your own life, someone is going to be brought closer to God. May we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this message that you've allowed us to hear today. Lord, it's not only for the people that are listening, but even for myself. Mm. And Lord, by ourselves, we can never do it. And Lord, we ask that you search our hearts and remove anything that is not pleasing to you. Lord, may you make us humble. May you allow us to submit to you. Lord, may you remove any pride in our hearts because pride comes before a fall. Lord, I put everyone in this room in your hands. Lord, you've given us gifts. You've placed us in different places for a reason. Lord, may we ask you individually what you are calling us to do. And in the times when no one supports us, in the times when we are the only one who are standing up for something we believe, Lord, may we never be scared. Because you say the spirit of fear does not come for you. But you've given us power, love, and a sound mind. Mm. Lord, may we have power that comes from above. Lord, as we go through the rest of the Sabbath, may you help us to meditate on your word. May you help us to reflect on your goodness and everything that you continue to do for mm. us. We thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, one thing, God, for the word that we have received. What does the church say? Amen. Uh, thank you.